Hi folks, I wanted to show you real quick how when we need to share something sensitive, when we need to share a secret with one of our colleagues, how we can do that in a secure way. So what happens often, you know, if we're using some mechanism uh, to work, especially remotely these days, right? We use Slack, we use Microsoft Teams, we use some other method perhaps uh, to enable us to chat and communicate in other ways. So what's very natural if we're using this mechanism uh, to communicate is we may pass uh, that sensitive information through this medium. But what we need to think about is a couple of things, right? How is that data traveling between me and the recipient? And number two, uh, where's that data being stored? So is it being transmitted and stored securely? Who has access to it uh, as it's being transmitted or where it is stored, right? So the concern is one of secret sprawl. So if we're using HashiCorp Vault to centralize our secrets, to use identity for humans as well as applications and machines to gain access to secrets, then why not use that mechanism to communicate that piece of sensitive information? Indeed, we have various secret engines, whether it's static secrets stored in a key value store or it's dynamically generated secrets on demand. Uh, sometimes we have a piece of information, as we said at the beginning, that needs to be communicated to someone else to enable them to do what they need to do. And for that, we actually have a mechanism in, in Vault that is really cool. Uh, it's, it's one of the secret engines that actually comes, uh, it, it's the secret engine that comes uh, enabled uh, that we may not think about, but it's the Cubbyhole secret engine. The Cubbyhole secret engine is uh, kind of like a, a locker, right? So I have my cubby hole, you have your cubby hole. I have my locker with my stuff in it, you have your locker with your stuff in it. The cool thing is that I can share something uh, that's in my cubby hole that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see by wrapping it, right? And I can give you the wrapping token. You can take that wrapping token, it's a one time use uh, token. You can take it, you can unwrap that secret and make use of it. Why take this approach? Well, number one, uh, with the audit log capability in Vault, uh, there's a, a transaction history of who unwrapped that secret, right? Uh, so, so we have logging, which is great. Uh, number two, because that wrapping token can only be used once, if I give you that wrapping token and you go to access that secret, uh, using that wrapping token and it, you get an error that it's not valid, uh, you know that that, we know that that uh, wrapping token was compromised and that that secret is therefore compromised and, and we better go look at the audit log to see who, who got at it, right? So let me show you how this works. Um, I'm going to, I, I have two browsers going here, Chrome and Safari, Chrome is on the left. Uh, I'll log in with one user uh, in one browser and another user in the other browser. So let me use LDAP authentication. Vault supports a number of me authentication mechanisms. Uh, I'm using LastPass uh, as a uh, browser plugin uh, to store secrets and I have my LDAP password uh, stored there. That's why this automatically filled in. Let me click sign in. All right, so I'm in. I see what secret engines I have access to and, and so forth. And you know, here it is, I'm logged in as Kimani, right? Uh, over here, I'll also use LDAP to log in, but I'll log in as a different user. So great, I am, no, I don't wanna save this, and no, I don't wanna save this. Um, great, so I'm logged in uh, as Monica over here on the right, uh, I don't have access to any other secret engines as Monica. Um, Monica has her cubbyhole, which doesn't have anything in it right now. And Kimani has uh, his cubbyhole, right? So let's do this. We're gonna create a secret as the user Monica. And you know this is an arbitrary path. So let's just call this for Kimani. 
right? And I can put some information here. Maybe I'm sharing an API key, right? Uh, let me generate uh, something here. So I'll go over here and I'll say generate secure password. Right? That sounds good. I'll put that value in here. I'll click save. Great. So I have this in my cubbyhole. I have the secret here. Uh, as you can see, uh, I should say Monica has that secret there. Uh, as you can see over here, Kimani doesn't have anything, right? It, it, it's not a shared cubbyhole. Uh, so how, how does Monica share this? So if we go over here to copy secret, uh, indeed we can copy the JSON for the secret, but what we want to do is we want to wrap the secret, right? So we'll click that. Uh, we, we've wrapped the secret, and then what we want to do is click this little icon over here that copies the wrapping token, right? So um, the, it's this piece of information, this wrapping token, that Monica is going to communicate to Kimani. So what does Kimani do with this? Well, he goes into uh, under tools. He can go into unwrap, right? And by the way, I'm doing this in the browser to make it easy you know, for demonstration purposes. But the same thing could be done through uh, curl commands, right, through API calls. Uh, you can do the same thing also via the Vault CLI. So at the end of the day, all three <laughs> methods are actually API calls, right? The UI is just doing API calls to Vault. Likewise, the Vault CLI does API calls to Vault. So, sorry, I thought I copied it. Uh, let, me, uh, let me wrap the secret again. Got that wrapping token. There's that wrapping token. Okay, uh, so I have this wrapping token. And then I click unwrap, right? And I have the secret that uh, Monica had stored, right? Um, and I can make use of that, and then I can go on my way. Let me actually hit back and show you what happens if I try to use that wrapping token again to unwrap the data. And you see I get this error, right? So what has happened is that uh, this token, if I get this error when I try to access it, I see that this wrapping token was actually compromised and we can go examine audit logs. So this provides us a, a better way to uh, share secrets um, using the cubbyhole system, right? So secrets are centralized, secrets are audited when they're accessed. Um, secrets don't end up sprawling into your Slack or Microsoft Teams or what have you. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day. Bye now. Thank you.